Hello and welcome back to Let's Read Part of Bayonetta Stuff. We just got into the good stuff with reading about angels and stuff. Alright then, uh, Justitia. Then Paradiso's Divine Will, also known as the Cardinal Virtues, Justitia, or, or Justice, is known to take a particularly strange physical manifestation. You ain't kidding. A large mass covered with a numerous faces and extenuating Standing outwards via countless tentacles, Lestadia could easily pass for a demon. Nah, it's too bright. It needs to be darker. This may be due to the fact that those depicting the angel are filled beyond conversation with awe at the sheer difficulty of encouraging justice in the world. Among producers divine will, there are those who believe that just just Lestadia is the closest of the cardinal virtues to hell. <laughs> hmm. John. Ben had unable to hide her worries but today that finds her path blocked by another witch, Jean. When her eyes lies not the wings of the young child but only blind ambition. She bats Neri and eyelash at the statues revealing the connection standing coldly in Bayonetta's path. Fire your eyes with hatred, accept your violent fate, accept it and burn the left eye. Prove you deserve it. Sapienta, that stupid water thing. I just have to depict the cardinal virtues of prudence, Sapienta, as a marine animal roaring the depths of the sea. This is likely due to the human disposition to characterize the sea as the source of all life, a veritable fountain of prudence and wisdom. It is also thought that Sepienta is responsible for the rise and fall of the tides and natural phenomena such as tsunamis. The grand idea that the living seas could be nothing other than divine will at work is actually evidence of Sepienta's narcissism, even amongst the other cardinal virtues. When a man born as a slave led his people to freedom if ruling a position, it said that it was only stepping on his favor that part of the siege and allowed them for their escape. Now so Moses prayed to this dude? Interesting. Jean again. 500 years ago, they uh, were wiped out in a chaotic battle. Between those two clans, there was one of our tender fate. The intersection of light and dark would bring clamor to us. John, consorting with the light in violation of that tenet, relentlessly pursues a follow which is destruction. Bayonetta, staring down the barrel of John's gun, sees something hiding behind the red which is bloodlust. Remember that called Ambulance towards the battle. Now no one can change the course they have set out upon. That is why the left eye I treasure. Yeah. Now my recording system would stop staticking like nuts. Eh, whatever, it doesn't matter, I guess. Jubileus. True na name of Jubileus is a code myth is actually unconstructed from unutterable syllables. It's because human remain incapable of capturing her true glory as she is the total embodiment of divine will. Manly bound to the physical world was forced to depict and describe her in the, its own tongue. It is supposed that humanity selected the name Jubileus taken from the word Jubilee, meaning celebration or jo rejoicing. An attempt to turn divine will into worldly happiness would be a repeated recital of a name. As a result of the cataclysmic events of the ancient first time again at which she sat on the very, at the very apex, Jubileus was forced into Dominion over the world of Paradiso. Governor, governor of the light amongst the trinity of realities and put into an endless summer, slumber. It was from this point that the forces of light and dark began the endless battle for hegemony. The resurrection of Jubilees would trigger a reunification of the trinity of the realities, revealing the desire of not only the forces of light but also a centuries old prayer said by those seeking divine intervention. <laughs> Fortitudo, that stupid dragon. Amongst the spiritually powerful of the Middle Ages, it was thought parody so held for all of our divine world, and as a result, they developed heavenly logic. The concept of the cardinal virtues was born of this logic and class classes Paradiso's divine will into four broad groups. These cardinal virtues are came to become physical manifestations of the great intentions of Paradiso and are known as the Laguna, spreading awe in the masses. Personal courage and fortitude, for Tudo has developed the interpreted as a terrifying being supported, sporting an enormous face and two dragon heads. He is said to be capable of sending magna flows at will. It's true. <laughs> Balder. A tyrant of a man motivated purely by self interest who 500 years ago incited the witch hunts. Annihilate not only the humble witches but also his fellow sages. Balder also uses magical abilities to take them toward the captured John. <laughs> Named after the Norse god of light, Balder showed. Promised him becoming a powerful human sage. However, he broke his clan's one a perfect hand of fault, conspiring with an other witch, begetting a child, Bayonetta. It was all rules to take possession of the eyes of the world, the overseers of his history that had previously been 
equally divided amongst clans. During the following 500 years, Balder gathered the devotion of his pious followers. Now his ambitions have reached the climax, placing the last remaining sage in the cups <coughs> of a universal anew. I see in vain that his own very blood become the eyes of the world to resurrect Jubilees, the creator, and unify the trinity of realities. The face nearly decided who would truly see it through the very end of the world. Temperanta. Uh, that dude. Temperanta, the true embodiment of the cardinal virtue of temperance, is often illustrated as an epic giant, its body rising from like a castle. Temperantia possesses two tree like arms, a composed figure said to illustrate the total reverence in which the Laguna are held by the faithful. When the true power of the virtue of temperance is laid upon the world, it is said to come as a tornado, capable of swallowing an entire country. Humans are helpless to g guess at the impetus behind divine will, whether it be anger or happiness, and are le and only left with prayer and promise of personal temperance. Only the heavens should make the storm subside. And that, no mm. demons. Okay, there's not that many of these. Madam Butterfly, a demon taking the form of a woman who left this world under fortunate circumstances, only being reincarnated in hell. Unlike a beautiful swallowtail butterfly appearance, like appearance, this demon is particularly brutal, and her reputation is well known even amongst demons. Of a feather. If a conjurer uh, uh, to sign a contract and trade the soul, her soul, demon would have pa uh, packed upon her enormous power with That's a witch fist. <laughs> Gomora, monstrous creature hailing from the demonic wood, Johnson Forest, taking the form of a dragon. Looks more like a dog. The form of a is incredibly fierce, and identifying all that moves as game and devouring its prey. Territory, it is most likely to be found alone. Good guess. <coughs> Malthus, that's our birdie. An enigmatic raven black bird shrouded in the mysterious mysteries of the sky. Ever curious, Malthus has filled itself with all the world's knowledge and mysteries. However, this same curiosity has led to a rather brutal dismeanor, causing the bird to tear those it, enc it encounters to shreds with its beak, sharp beak, and razor like talons. Hecatong Chair. A giant endowed with six fearsome arms capable of pulverizing mountains. Those unfortunate enough to fall underfoot of the demon are subject to days long violent earthquakes. Lacking knowledge but brimming with brutality, it is said that even the most powerful of conjurers should take heed at the danger this beast pre presents. Scolopenora, a vile centipede hailing from Fregentonta, a river of boiling blood in the depths of Inferno. Rumors speak of its body exceeding 10 kilometers in length. That's long. Moving uh, unlike anything its size, its deafness allows it to wrap around and construct its prey in the blink of an eye. <coughs> Phantas Maranef. Phantas Maranef. Maranea. Phantas Maranea. Ne nea, I don't know. That's upon a sea of magna, deep within the furthest reaches of Inferno. Really seen upon the face of the earth, even sightings of the demon in hell are seldom event. Leading to its name, which means Phantom Spider. Good name. While having the frightening appearance of a spider, it is a curious beast and should one have the good fortune to encounter it, one should treat it with care and respect in hope of receiving rare treasures and secrets in return. Hmm. Sheba. When the cosmos was split into light, darkness, and chaos in between, the incredibly powerful Sheba was born amongst, alongside the darkness, controlling world of Inferno. As she lives in the hellish land and is often classified as a demon, however, Full details of existence are unknown. Basically, while Jubilees is the creator of the, is the controller of heavens, she was the controller of hell. Interesting. And tone of umbra arts. Okay, that's just that's just my techniques. And these are all the notes from Antonio. How many of these do I have? Ah, too many. <sighs> Heard that one. Let's see this one. And within Vigor, there are great many structures built long ago by two clans. And how much time is left? Um, I'll read these next time, folks. So, we'll see you next time on the final installment of Let's Read Stuff in Bayonetta. Besides, this is all boring. I'll do something more entertaining later. See ya!